Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da ahabati fillah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh A question was asked How do we walk the fine line between minding our own business and bringing awareness to others? And this was in relation to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني. From Abu Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه he reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said this is in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said from the excellent Islam of a person or the complete Islam of a person is that they leave off that which does not concern them. In this hadith, Ahabat Fillah, it's very important that we have a correct understanding of this hadith of Nabi and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And so the question was excellent. What is the fine line between uh, leaving off that which does not concern us, or basically minding our own business and bringing awareness to others. So first and foremost, we have to look at the hadith shaman in completeness and totality. And we have to look at Islam and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a comprehensive way. And that we know and we understand from the statements of the ulama sunnah that when the Prophet ﷺ said, min husni, min husni islami al mar'i, from the excellent Islam of a person, meaning that this is their the higher level of, uh, of uh, iman, meaning that someone who does someone who doesn't do this, they're still from Ahli Iman, they're still Muslim. But their Islam and their Iman is weaker, it's on a different level. But min husni islami mar'i, from the excellence of a person's Islam, is that they do this. And what is that? Is they mind their own business, they leave that which doesn't concern them. So then you have to look at, in this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what concerns you as a Muslim? Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being concerned about your dunya wal akhira, fulfilling the purpose in life, so Allah, uh, uh, the purpose in life, Allah wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem. I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So those things which concern us the most is how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to fulfill the maqsad of Islam, the maqsad of shara, the purpose of the shara, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, with no partners, no shirk, no kufr, no disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but worshiping Him and Him, tabarak wa ta'ala alone. So that's the, the, the awl maqsad, or that is the, the maqsad. Along with that, ahabat tafillah, Along with being concerned and perfecting our Islam, those things which concern us is things like talib al ilm. Why? Why do I always keep emphasizing talib al ilm? Is it because it's nice to have a lot of books? It's nice people to say you're a student of knowledge or a tawailib al ilm, you're a small student of knowledge or whatever the case? No. But the reason is because the Prophet said, Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. Because Talib al ilm as the Salaf used to say, Talib al ilm Talib al-Jannah, seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So therefore, since we're talking about worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and we're talking about doing that in order to fulfill the divine purpose and to get to Jannah, then we need to do the things to get to Jannah. That should concern us. So Talib al ilm is seeking paradise. And that means Talib al-Ilm is going to tell you the halal and the haram. 
Talib al-Ilm is going to tell you what should concern you and what you should leave. Those things which don't concern you. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith. And likewise, Ahabat fillah, good manners. Being good to people and nice to people. Treating people with kindness. This is things that should concern you. Why? Because these things benefit you feed dunya well akhirah. They benefit you in this life as well as the hereafter. So anything which gives you a sharia benefit, that gives you a benefit in this life, and a benefit in the hereafter, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fil akhirati hasan wa kina dhab nar anything that gives us benefit uh, in the hereafter, then those are things which concern us. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, hus, that the uh, husnul khulq is heavy on the scale of believers. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So, therefore, Having your scales heavy on Yom al Qiyamah is something that concerns you. How do you do it? Husnul Khulq. Husnul Khulq, what is that? Good manners with how doing the things that people like with you. How you relate to people, whether they're Muslim, non Muslim, whether they're Mushrik, whether it's the right of the animals. All of that is in Husnul Khulq. Kadalika, likewise, as Imam bin Baz says, and before him, ulama, that this husn al khulq is a comprehensive term, this khulq. So it includes the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to worship him and him alone. Qala Nabi and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'anu qal, Mu'adh said, Kuntu radif al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar. I was behind the Prophet ﷺ on a donkey. Look at the humbleness of the Prophet Kuntu Radif Nabi Himar Faqal. And I said, Ya Faqal. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Mu'adh, Tadri Mahakal Ibadi wa Allah. Oh Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon a servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? Mu'adh replies, Kultu. Allah wa Rasulu alam. Allah and His Messenger know best. Then the Prophet says, The right of Allah upon His servants is they worship Him and Him alone and they don't associate any partners with Him. So again, Tawheed is from Husn al Khulq. It's also because it has to do with the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you talk about manners in general, Husn al Khulq, this, also, this deals with everyone's haq. How you deal with the creation and 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 have positive interaction with them and response from them, and likewise how you deal with the creator, meaning that you give him his right, you worship him and him alone, you follow his commandments, and you avoid his prohibitions, which is taqwa. So those are the things we've established now. What are the things that concern us? The Prophet said, Wa tarkuhu ma la yani. Leave those things which don't concern him. That's from the good iman, the high iman of a Muslim, the high, the, the, the excellent level of Islam of the Muslim. So, how do we walk a fine line between that and giving awareness to others? Well, the Prophet said, Men ra'a minkum munkarin biyad. Whoever sees an evil, then change it with his hand. Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever sees a good, uh, whoever sees a, a sin, that which is sinful, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue, speak out against it. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of faith. Showing us all those things are part are from Iman. Even just hating something in your heart. Man, they're drinking wine. I can't say nothing to these guys. You know, I hate it in my heart. That's from Iman. Alhamdulillah, you have Iman. And you're doing an act of Ibadah. Ibadah qalbiyah. It relates to your heart. Because you detest something that Allah detests. 
but you don't have the ability to do anything about it. You can't even speak because you know these guys are going to knock you out or whatever the case may be. Even if they're Muslim. It's not worth getting beat up or getting killed because you told them to not drink alcohol. That's not from Hikmah. That's not from wisdom. That's not the Makassid of Shara. That's not what the Sharia orders you to do. Right. So that means having concern about others doesn't contradict that at all. But it means to busy yourself with those things which are wasteful. Those things which have no benefit. For example, if you are busying yourself with the latest news about someone. How to criticize so-and-so. How to curse so-and-so. How to backbite so-and-so. How to do namima on so-and-so. Then that means you're busying yourself with sinfulness. You're busying yourself with that which doesn't concern you because it only brings you ism. So if it brings you sin, it doesn't concern you. And then if it brings you no benefit, it doesn't bring you any benefit in the dunya, nor the hereafter, then leave it as well. So I hope that's clear. That's the fine line. So you still, uh, you know, if you see uh, something wrong or you see something good or you want to advise your brother or you want to help your Muslim brother or sister, you still do that. That's wajib. Those are those are other uh, uh, obligations in the shirr. They're also mentioned in other nusuls, other texts from min kitab ilah wa min sunnati, min sunnati rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're also in the book of the sunnah. That those are other rights. We have rights over another. We have uh, responsibilities over an, another. A Muslim, a Muslim, you should do who about them. The Muslim is a brother to the Muslim. They strengthen one another. So you, you still have responsibility to strengthen your brother and to be concerned about your brother and to help your brothers and sisters in their difficulties. All those things are concerned, but it's just leaving off and it's excessive indulgence in those things which don't bring you benefit. You're not going to be asked about by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things which don't bring you benefit in this life and more importantly, or nor in the hereafter, and especially the hereafter. So I hope that's clear. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.